Hey guys, Dibs here, and today I've got a game analysis of some Genji gameplay. Now in this video, I'm going to first let the game run on its own with no commentary, so you guys can see how the game flows. And after that, I'm going to come back and go and review each part of the video in which I make some important decisions, as well as give some tips and tricks to let you guys understand what is going through my mind while playing Genji. So yeah, I'm also going to allow you guys to skip through the non-commentated part with the link right here in case you guys want to get to the commentated part. But yeah, if anything else, um, I think that's about it. I'll let you guys get with the non-commentated part and here it goes.
so let's get to the commentary so right here is very important already when you first start out as Genji and as a flanker you kind of want to be close or not too close to the entrance but you kind of want to stay hidden of course so the first thing I want you want to do is remember what kind of targets you want to pick out so right here I saw there was a Mei here and there's a McCree here as well and also a Genji along with a Mercy so when you're a harasser, like a, such as Genji and um, Tracer, you always want to go for healers first because that's the backbone of the en enemy team. So yeah, this is why I go for him or go for her first. I see that she's coming out and I decide to go after her. So she's starting to shoot me, which is correctly. And after that, then I use my reflex ability to deflect most of the damage that's just coming in. But yeah, I was actually able to escape. And the main thing you want to do is that if you're here as well, um, let's see. You want to keep track of your life. So right now I'm at 100 life and I'm actually almost about to die. You don't want to stay in this area because there's a lot of people here. As a flanker, you always want to try to survive as long as possible. And that's why I am backing out right here and I don't want to take any risks anymore. So that's one main important thing you want to do or think about when playing a flanker. You never want to always, you're always trying to want to survive as long as you can. And so I see this McCree here, he's weak, you know, using my shift ability or my, uh, my dash ability, swift strike. And right there is also very important right here. So right here, you can hear a Roadhog. So if you listen carefully, you'll be able to hear Roadhog's footsteps. So that is a key point um, because that tells you that there's going to be a Roadhog here. And um, what happens when you first see a Roadhog? Well, as a Roadhog, normally what they would do is they would try to hook you right away. So if you want to predict that, instead of being Tracer and blinking to the left, you want to use your Deflect as some kind of mad, uh, damage mitigation. So you would always want to reflect right when you see a Roadhog, or maybe about 0.5 seconds after you see a Roadhog to predict the re, uh, predict the hook. So that's what I do. Predict the hook and reflect it. Either that or I missed it. Or he missed it. And right there is also another important point. So he misses it, and I see a Mei shooting at me right here. So that is a direct counter to you. Mei is a direct counter to Genji because he can slow you, she can slow you down, and also um, yeah, because you can't deflect it. You can't deflect a, a snow, the snow gun from me. And if she snows you or freezes you, then you're pretty much dead. So you don't want to deal with her. And now what do you want to do? You want to escape. So what's the nearest escape route that you have? Well, Genji can climb walls. So yeah, you just run away and just escape right away. That's what you want to do. And then you always want to flank around to the side. And now I see this healer again and picking my battles. And yeah, just killing the healer. And just trying to deal as much damage here. And that is also important because you always want to keep track of your Swift Strike ability. So right, let's go back to that. So right here, um, I have m two targets to choose from, the one she's healing. And of course, you want to pick the healer again. So this is the healer by herself and getting her weak using my melee. And I can see that right here, she is weak. So then I use my Swift Strike ability. I go through her, get one kill. And after you get a kill, you can tell that your Swift Strike ability gets reset. So now I have another chance to use it. So right now I'm picking my targets. I see a Roadhog and a Genji. But I know that I saw another Genji right here in front of me. And he's not paying attention. So that's why I pick him instead. Use my Swift Strike again. And also I use my right click because your right click ability or your... Um, your what was it your shurikens when you fan your shurikens it's very good close range so once i do that i get that kill and my shift ability or my swift strike ability is also reset again so you always want it this is how you um, get genji to kind of like snowball you get one kill you get your swift strike ability back you swift strike again you get another swift strike ability so it's kind of like you use it over and over and over again and get multiple kills so right here i see that another genji is going after me 
And I see this row hog here as well. So I use my deflect ability because it's two on one. That's important because you want to deflect as much damage as you can to a single target when you have two targets going against you. And so I use my deflect ability and I see that this Geji is low again. And so that's why I use my swift strike ability because I know it's up. And also, even though this Genji was close to me, I decide to use not my fan ability, but my regular main attack because he's in a straight line. He's running straight at me, and if he's doing that, you always want to use your left mouse or your, uh, your main primary attack because that allows you to fan, th not fan, but allows you to throw three shurikens directly at his head if he's running straight at you. And I can deal a lot of damage, actually. So that's why I do that instead of fanning my uh, shurikens. And I use my shift to kill him again, and my, uh, my thing doesn't get reset because I use my shift afterwards. Or I, I guess I kill him with my uh, other ones. Or my, uh, what was it? My sh what was it? What did I kill him? I guess I kill him with my, um, <coughs> I killed him after I used my sh uh, swift strike. So, but yeah, let's go to this part right here. So at this point, I'm going against this Roadhog. So he is trying to run away, and I'm just fanning my, uh, my shurikens at him because it's close. I'm trying to reload, fan, 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 and I'm always double jumping. As you can see, so double jumping is really important. And when he gets to a mid range, I start using my single shoot against. That's really, uh, it's more accurate. You get more shots off. And there's a May here trying to avoid her. And this McCree right here. So the same thing as a Roadhog, the same idea as Roadhog. When you first see a McCree, the first thing he's normally going to do is try to flash you. So now that I noticed that my, uh, my deflect is off cooldown or is on cooldown, what else can I do? I have to try to get out of his range and try to make him harder to hit me. And so I use a double jump instead of a um, what was it? Instead of a deflect. So that kind of dodges a little bit. He kind of does miss me a little bit, but that's what you want to do. You want to use your double jump as much as possible. And since everybody here is crowded, I use my ultimate. Now, one thing you want to take note of is when to use your ultimate as Genji. Now, most of the time, you always want to use it whenever the enemy is distracted or when they least expect you. So it's usually when everything is going crazy, when there's a lot of combat going on and when everybody is distracted. So right here, it's not a good time to use it because I have this McCree here in front of me paying attention to me. But now I see this wall going up and I see this Roadhog here. And the only person really paying attention to me is this McCree. So first I would have to take care of the McCree and then use my ultimate on everybody else here. Because whenever Mei uses her ice wall right here, it's a signal that she feels that she is being attacked and she wants to try to be safe and escape. And she is very distracted by the enemy opponent. So that's a very good time for you to use your ultimate. So that's why I end up using it. And his ultimate does AOE damage. So whenever it does AOE damage, you always want to have multiple targets within your slashing range. And actually the slashing range with your left mouse button, it does 120 damage and has a quite big range in front of you. So you always want to be turning both left and right when you use it. So you kind of like swipe the sword in an extra radius when you use when you turn left and right. It allows you to get a bigger radius of uh, people in your, in your range. And that's why you slash. And since I saw that they were weak, I hit both of them right here. And then I see three targets here. They're all within my range. I hit two and three of them. And then after that, then I use my swift strike to finish them off. So whenever they're all clumped up, that's what you want to do. Clump them up, use your left mouse button or your main attack, and then just swift strike through all of them. And we were able to get quite a bit of them. And yeah, that's pretty much what you want to do whenever you use his ultimate. If you didn't know, your ultimate, when you use your ultimate, you also get your shift strike ability, swift strike ability, reset every time you get a kill. So you can use your swift strike through multiple enemies, get a kill, and then you can swift strike back again and slash through many enemies at once. And just keep doing it over and over and over again. At this point, I'm trying to reflect because I think that the Mei is going to use her, her snow gun, not her snow gun, but her icicles on me. And right here. So right there, he kind of missed me, so I got kind of lucky. And I got this healer on me. So I got this far right here as well. Nothing much going on here. Use my swift strike to get closer to her. And I got double Genji here now, so at this point, I feel like they're just going to try to get past this and go on to the point. So I just go back to see how I can deal with this double Genji. So I hear that Denji uses his ultimate. I don't want to be close to him because it's a melee type of ultimate. So I just kind of stay away from him and let the turrets take care of him. So there's a far up here, swift strike up here. And I'm trying to predict at that point right there. So you swift strike. So the first thing I far would normally do is they would try to shoot you right when you're in front of the face. So you would also try to predict this far as movements just like you would predict a Roadhog and you would deflect right away. But she was actually really good at not doing so. 
But instead she uses her, um, what was it? Her, her grenade, I guess, yeah, her, her, her grenade to kind of create distance between her and me. And it actually doesn't deal any damage. So that's good for her that she was able to do it because, yeah, it, it separates her and I can't get her from here. So I'm trying to chase after her at this point because she's very low. But I see this Roadhog do damage again and again. He's very low, healing, healing, healing. And I use my deflect because same thing as before. Right after he's done healing, what's the first thing he's normally going to do? He's either going to try to shoot you or he's going to try to hook you. So what's the first thing you want to do is you want to predict it and you use your deflect. But instead he uses his ultimate and it deflects back to him. And you know, as you know, Roadhog's ultimate kind of makes people bounce around. So that's why he was able to fly in the air. So we got our own Genji and we got a lot of Genjis around. And I see this Mei because I see I got a notification that they're trying to capture the point. So even though Mei is a counter to me, I kind of want to take advantage of that or take care of her. So she throws down her ultimate. And you kind of don't want to stay around. So when she throws down her ultimate, you can see where it goes. And once you start getting frozen, it's really bad for you. So what do you want to do? You want to get out of this area. But instead, you can use your swift strike to get out, but also deal damage to her at the same time. But this is a combination that I normally do. It's a fan, your shurikens, a quick melee, followed into a swift strike. So since she's really close to me, I can use that combination and deal maximum damage while escaping the, the ultimate at the same time. So it makes it very useful to use that. So right now is first you fan, which I just did right there. You quick melee, and then you swift strike. So that deals a lot of damage at once. Now allowing myself, and also allowing myself to escape the freeze. So I see a, um, what was it? A, a Winston. So I'm trying to check to see how many they have. And I use my deflect again. And yeah. So at this point, this is what you kind of want to do as a harasser. You're harassing them, literally. So right here. Use my deflect, harass, harass, harass. So I see that Roadhog. I saw part of the Roadhog coming from the right. So I knew what he's gonna, his plan was. His plan was going to come here and try to hook somebody. So what you want to do is try to keep their attention on you by just coming, uh, coming in and out, throwing your shurikens, and keeping their attention on you while your allies come in and deal the damage. Which is why he comes in, and just hooks them, and just gets them. So that's kind of like teamwork that you want to do as a harasser. And poking in and out, dodging those hooks as much as possible. And I see the Genji trying to go through the back. Nothing special here. And at this point, the Mei ice blocks. So the first thing that I know that a Mei is going to do is either ice wall or use her ultimate. So I want to try to get rid of her as much as po or fast as possible because this Genji uses ultimate as well. But I'm trying to focus on this Mei because she's a counter to me. So you want to deal as much damage as you can. So you right-click fan, and then right there, when she uses her ice wall, I see a, a glimpse of a Roadhog, and I know that a Genji is around right here. So he uses ultimate, and there's a Mei here. You don't want to stay in this area for too long, but you always want to deal as much damage as possible. So you just fan, and you just go away. That's what I do. So I fan, and I actually get that Genji right there. He's right here. So I got kind of lucky that I was actually able to get him off because he was low. Get that kill. Stop him from using his ultimate. And <laughs> this Roadhog gets stuck here. But yeah, you just want to fan and just try to deal as much harass damage, even if it's very, very minimal. You can easily get a kill off. And yeah. So right here as well, even though Mei is a counter to you, you typically want to stay away from her. right? So she can instantly freeze you. Not instantly, but she can freeze you and deal a lot of damage. But right here, I was able to get a few shots off. So I can see that her health is around half right here. And I, I try to get as close as I can because I see her health is low. So I swift strike. And I see that she's very low already. I can easily take her out right here. And that's why I do that. Usually if I was not able to get the first three shot off, or three shots off, then I wouldn't stay around. Because she's very, you know, very dangerous to you. She can easily get you. So right there again. Predicting the Roadhog hook. I was predicting the first Roadhog hook right there by dodging to the side. Instead of using my deflect. Because I knew that I don't have to deflect. I can just step to the side and predict and dodge shots instead of use my reflex. So that's what you want to do. If you don't have to use your deflect, you can either step to the side if you're next to a doorway and not waste your cooldown. But at this point, I'm right here deflecting both the hook and also the shots back at him. So you also want to make note that when you deflect, you also also have to aim. So if you're, let's say I'm deflecting and my aim is somewhere around here, it's not going to go directly back at him. So every time you deflect, you always want to keep your crosshair on the enemy you're deflecting so you can deflect it back at them. This is where it gets kind of hard because you want to have really good aiming when you deflect. 
you know, such as trying to deflect the Widowmaker's sniper shots. That's going to be really hard if it's far away because you have to be perfectly accurate. But since it's a Roadhog, he's a big target, it's easier for me to do that. So just keep your crosshair in the general area and get him down. So right there, I shouldn't have used my fan since he was very low. And instead, I just used my uh, you know, melee and <laughs> get him down. So there's a May here. And actually, I'm checking here at this point to see what their composition is. So right now, I look at it, I'm like, wow, okay, there's three Genjis, two Mei's, and a Roadhog. So these three Genjis are really hard to deal with as a Genji yourself because they can easily team up on you with their Swift Strikes. So you can say that they're that kind of like a counter to you as well as this double Mei. Two Mei's are really hard to deal with as Genji as they are both counters. So I'm just like, okay, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to try to single them out one by one. You don't want to deal with them all at the same time, especially as a harasser. You always want to pick your battles, just like Chaser, one at a time. That's where Genji kind of like, so uh, what was it? That's where he is the best at doing. That's where he, uh, what was it? That's where he thrives, I guess. So yeah, picking one target at a time. So fan, fan. Since you're really close, if you're really close to your target, you always want to fan. And since she used her ice block, I'm like, okay, well, there's nothing really for me to do at that point. There's no reason for me to stick around. Okay, so if you think about it. Hmm. So she, she right now she ice blocks. If you stay in the area, I'm like, okay, there's really nothing for you to do. You know, you're just going to be wasting your time. You don't want to be seen by another hero. So you can stay hidden. And the fastest way for you to kill her is just to use your ultimate, right? So she's going to not expect you to use your ultimate because you're kind of hidden. Now you just use it. You go in there, get a few slashes off. Get one kill. And there's another May, and she ice blocks again. Same thing. You kind of want to run back, run away, and now you come back. Kind of surprise her. Right. And now, right now, you're about to get frozen, and you know that there's also another Bastion there. So that's another important point. So right here, at this point, she has basically almost no damage done to her because she, um, she's about half. But I'm about halfway being frozen as well. I know that I can't really kill her before she freezes me. <clears throat> so what's the thing that you should do? You should try to escape. You shouldn't always try to deal with a Mei if you know you're about to get frozen before she can kill you. Because if she freezes you and she right clicks you to your head or she uses an icicle to your head, you're basically dead. And I also hear a Bastion coming here, so there's really no reason for me to stay around. So I try to jump, 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 run away, and then I use my Swift Track ability to get away. And now I can actually easily come back because my freeze ability or the freeze timer is gone. Right, so it's been about two seconds since I've been starting to get frozen, and now I know it's safe to go back in. And you kind of want to do that as a harasser. You kind of want to poke in and out always. You know, don't stay in the same area, and you don't want to stay out of battle for too long. Or else you're not going to be doing your job as a harasser. So coming in and out, in and out, and getting back onto this May using my reflect on this Roadhog because he's using his ultimate. And yeah, you always want to deflect ultimates back. Getting units that were distracted. Yeah, right there, it's pretty much your a combination that you can use if a target is not moving and distracted. You can use your main attack into the head right here, and then use a swift strike. That would normally kill any, um, any what was it, any hero with less than 200 life. So each hero can does 28 damage. So if you actually get, what was it, a three headshots, that's 28 times three. Or 28 times 2, which is 56 times 3, which is about 168 damage. So that's a lot of damage done if you get 3 headshots and also a swift strike at the end. You can normally kill anybody that's less than 200 life or around 250. So that's why I do that. Was able to get him. And right here, dealing with another Genji. And right here at this point, this is where you always want to know where your enemy is. Keep tra Keeping track of your enemy is really hard to deal with when you're a Genji. Especially because you're sw using swift strike and you want to do 180s. I actually end up picking my mouse up. And so I lose track of my enemy right here. So right here, I pick up my mouse because I run out of mouse space. I'm always doing 180s and I lose track of him. So he's actually right on my right side and I end up losing the battle because of that. So that's really important for you to keep track of where your enemy is. So he's really good at it. So he knows where I am and he keeps track of me the entire time. And that's how you win a Genji fight. You know, keeping track of where everybody is, using your fan as much as possible and melee combo as much as possible as well. So I know there's a double Winston because I see two shields. So I'm like, okay, well, there's a lot of counters to Genji here. And using my deflect right away on that McCree because the first thing he's going to do is try to flash me, right? So first you see a McCree here. What's he going to do? He's going to try to flash you. So you use your deflect right away. But instead, he actually shoots himself in the nuts. <laughs> and so there's another Genji here. Kind of hard to deal with, but doing that at the same time, dealing with him. And yeah, um, just getting rid of him. Not too bad. Using a right-click melee, nothing special there. 
I think. Is there anything else? Um, oh yeah. I think. Is there? Nothing much. Just trying to stay around the area, dealing with this Winston. So double Winston, I should actually swift strike out of here. That was a mistake by me. Right here. So, if you know Winston, you cannot deflect Winston's electric charge. And he can literally just zap you to death. So at this point, there's two of them. I should actually try to swift strike away and get out of there. There's really no point for me to stay around, and I just died. Which was my mistake. I should have used my swift strike. But yeah. Um, nothing much here. Using my swift strike. And, and using my ultimate, just in case anybody else is going to come out. But yeah, it doesn't look like anything else is going to happen. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The decision making when it comes to... Genji, a lot of the decision making is quick on the spot, just like playing Tracer. Since you're a harasser, you always have to make split time decisions. And I would say Genji doesn't have quite the amount of um, escapability as Tracer does, because Tracer has three blinks and a recall. She can instantly recall and just get away really quickly. And she doesn't really have to use her environment as much as an advantage as Genji does. Genji does have a double jump but he can also climb walls. So you have to make sure you have an area where you can climb walls in order to use your escapability. Tracer can really easily just blink three times in one direction and gain huge distance. Epic. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it when it comes to Genji. You always want to keep track of all your abilities, kind of like Tracer. And yeah, that's my decision making when it comes to Genji. If you guys have any questions or you know, feel like there's something that wants to be or you want more explained as Genji. He's a very complex character. He's a little bit harder to play than Tracer, but I feel like he's also a very different style. The thing is when it comes to Tracer and Genji, Genji he has to use the enemy's abilities against him. So it's less flexible in my opinion. For Tracer, you can do a lot more things with your blink. Um, it's more intuitive in my opinion. And for Genji, it's like you have to know most of how everybody else is going to react to you and try to use them against or use those abilities against them. And that's Probably the hardest part when playing Genji. So yeah, I mean, I uh, hope this helped you guys. I uh, hope this explained a little bit more of the decision making I make with Genji. If you guys want to see more of this type of style of video, please let me know. And uh, let me know what kind of hero you want me to do next. So yeah, if anything else, I always want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.